Hi, this is Sherry from C Virtual Marketing and Photography. Today I'm going to be walking you through the process of ordering a post to walk via the Canada Post website. If you can order through your brokerage, we recommend that you do so just because it's likely you have a nationally negotiated brokerage rate that's better than what's offered to the general public. However, if you don't or you want to just order directly, this is how you do it. So the first thing you're going to do is open up the Canada Post website in your web browser. I'm using Chrome today, but you can use whatever browser you're comfortable with. So we go to www.candapost.ca. Once the web page opens, up here in the toolbar, you're going to see the option to select Tools, Marketing Tools. Under Marketing Tools, you're going to select Precision Targeter. And now it should momentarily load up um, the option to start a new or continue with an existing order. Um, for the most part, you'll be starting a new order, so start new. And you are going to be planning an unaddressed ad mail mailing. So get started. You are mailing a standard piece of mail. You can see that is the default option. It's already checked off. The default weight is 30 grams. One of our postcards is actually a little bit less than this, but you can leave the default of 30 grams and click continue. When do you need the delivery of your mailing to start? We're going to choose the deposit date and we're going to leave the default as today's date as long as you deposit um, the postcards after this date it shouldn't be a problem so click continue. So now we have the first of options to target our mailing a little bit. So you can actually choose where you want the mailing delivered to include houses, apartments, farms, or businesses. For the most part you're never going to need businesses so you can uncheck that and now depending on the type of listing that you are selling or have sold, you can target your audience. So if you sold a house, maybe you want to target other homes in the area. If you sold a condo, maybe other condos, etc. So for this example, we're going to assume you have sold a house and want to target other houses. So we're going to uncheck apartments and farms and click continue. You do not want to limit the mailing, so you can ignore this section at this time. We are not planning to deposit the mailing at more than one site, so don't include transportation fees. But we do want to include the taxes in your estimated delivery cost. So select Include Taxes and BC. Click Continue. Now you have the option of using the Canada Census demographics to further target your audience. You can choose, um, go into these categories and choose various items to narrow your search. You could go by age or household size and sort of narrow down exactly who you're targeting. Otherwise though you can just click skip or continue. So now we're going to define the delivery area. It's a custom area that we're going to choose so it'll create a little check mark and hit continue. Enter the address of your listing. and it's going to pop up with a bunch of different op um, options. So select the correct one from the drop-down and it's going to open up a map of that area. So as you can see we are near 136th Street and 58th Avenue so the listing is right about here. So now what we're going to do is create a selection of our target area. I'm going to recommend you use the scale down here at the bottom left to sort of gauge what a square kilometer is and use that probably as your starting guide for creating a selection. One square kilometer, you know, is not too big and not too small and often will include a good chunk of listings. So to start your selection process just click on the map and you'll see it's creating a purple line as I drag down and then just click the other edges of your boundary. It doesn't actually have to be a square, you could make a pentagon or any shape you want just as it includes the area that you would like it to. So double click to finish it. And Now what it's going to do is auto calculate the total number of pieces and mail walks that this selection is touching. So as you can see it's actually touching quite a few and the 
there are a few male walks in this area. So the male walks are designated by different colors. So we have one here, we have this orange one here, we have this maroon one here, or, and a lighter blue one down here. The names of the male walks are actually these combinations of letters and digits. You can see LC0040, LC0048, LC0049. So these are the various male walks that this selection is touching. Keep in mind that when you're choosing male walks, you actually can't choose just a portion of it. So you can't just have this one street that's covered in this blue male walk. You actually have to do the entire male walk. And if you don't have enough pieces to go to all of the homes here, the postal worker has the prerogative to just choose the, the homes that are, are convenient for them. So they'll just choose the number to finish off the delivery, and that'll be that. So you can see up here is the total number of mail pieces in our area. We have 2,615, and the estimated delivery cost is $433.83. And if you sort of um, hover over top, it'll do an exact breakdown with the mailing and the GST and the total amount. <laughs> But let's say you look at this and you're like, oh, this selection isn't enough. You know, I actually wanted a slightly larger, um, a larger number of listings to, to be reached. So you can actually update your selection by going to this box here, this edit selection, click it once, and then double click your selection. When you do that, you can see these little squares show up at the corner of your selection. And all you have to do to make your selection bigger is to stretch them out to wherever you want them to go. So you could stretch them out here like this. You could add a new one here. Or you could make it smaller. Like let's say I decide I actually don't want to include this section over here. I can drag this section in and just bring it over over here if I'd like. So you can change your selection however you'd like. And once you've unclicked, it's going to recalculate the number of walks and listings in the area. So you can see it's done that, and it's recalculated and reconfigured. And now we have 5,000 pieces, 438, and an estimated delivery of $902. But now you're looking at this, and you're thinking, hmm, perhaps I don't want to include all of these walks. If we zoom in, certain walks you only get um, you might only want to target one or two pieces or roads in a particular walk and you might not feel like it's worthwhile. So what you can actually also do is make your selection based on the routes and the mail walks. So if you click this fifth button here next to map options, the actual individual mail walks will now light up when you hover over them. So you can see that this one, and especially if I hover a little bit longer, has 496 pieces. This one over here has 627. This one over here has 490. So you can see they light up and you can get a good idea of what the mail walk is including. So from this particular screen you can actually deselect the mail walks individually. So let's say I'm like okay my selection barely even includes this. I don't even know how this is touching it. I don't want this one anymore. And if you click it, the mail walk turns white and it's no longer included in the total count. Same with this one and this one. I'm not feeling that's important. This one up here. No. Nope. So you can edit your selection via the actual selection of your of your grid or you can just do it by selecting the individual mail walks themselves, which Ever is easiest and most comfortable for you until until the mail walk either encompasses the total number of pieces you feel like printing, the cost, or just just what you're comfortable with. You know, you might just base it on the exact region you want it to or you want to cover, and so whatever works for you. So for this example, because I am actually going to be placing an order. I know that there is a very particular little mail walk over here that only includes four pieces and I'm going to be using that today to complete this order just because it's very affordable. So I'm going to deselect all of these other mail walks and now I'm down to 
four pieces and 66 cents, which is just great today. So we're going to place an order. And it's going to ask me to sign in. So at this point, you would either have to sign up and create your own profile, or if you've done this before, you can just log in. So I'm just going to log in. And it's just going to take a minute and get me to where I need to go. Okay, so now it's going to ask me to create a unique mailing name for this postal walk. And as you can see below, it says your mailing can be found up to 13 months in my mailings. So if you want to do a repeat mailing, you know, perhaps you did a just listed before and now you want to do a just sold, or perhaps you're just wanting to target this area because that's where you traditionally work and so you just want to target all the homes in that area. So you are going to want to create an individual mailing name for this listing and I'm going to recommend you just use the address of the property. Keeps it simple. You can, you could just do 5739136 Street or, you know, ST or whatever works for you. That will make it easy to distinguish from other listings that you have. Click Save. And it's going to bring you to this page where you can see we've already filled out certain information, the name, the size, the weight, the deposit date. The deposit location is selected automatically based on the listing address that you sort of started with. And I would recommend you just use the optimized address. This is where Staples will drop off the package. And it's, since it's closest to the listing address, it is less likely or will make your transportation fees lower just because it's closer to that listing address rather than choosing a post office drop that's closer to your office but really far from the listing. So ideally you're choosing um, a post office that's as close to the listing as possible just so the mail walk um, is nearby. So we're going to click continue because we like the optimized deposit location. And now we're going to look at the containers and bundling. So these containers and the bundles are created by Staples, so you don't obviously have to do this, but you do need to tell CandaPost the size of it. So we're going to do a length of 18, a height, oh, a width of 11, and a height of 4.5, ah, 4.5 inches. Bundling. This is based on the piecemeal dimensions. Um, I'm using the largest size we normally do which is a 5 by 7 so 5 by 7 inches and then you're going to hit configure manually. We typically do a hundred pieces per bundle and 10 bundles per container. So you're going to click apply and it's going to do some math and figure this all out for us and it sees that there are four pieces, one container, and now we're going to click continue. So now it's going to ask you for your credit card information. As you can see here we've ordered before so we have a saved credit card so I'm sure you're comfortable filling out your credit card information via other online websites etc. So just complete this section as per normal and I will do the same and then click continue. And now it's going to give you a summary of your order. As you can see here, the name, the size, the weight, the timing, the, the delivery de installation, the cost, the container, the bundling, and the total number of pieces. So all the information is summarized here and we're just going to hit place order. And now once you've done that, yay, you've successfully completed your order, which is great. However, don't close this page yet. We do need you to save two things from here. And that is your statement of mailing and your container labels. So where it says print, just click. And on my computer, this automatically downloads to my download folder. And I'm going to do this again. But if, if it does actually want to print, you could save it as a PDF. That would work fine too. 
and now I'm going to go to open my downloads and you can see that this number matches the number generated by Canada Post. So we're going to take both of these documents out and what we'd like you to do is to rename them for staples so it's really clear what these items are. So I'm going to ask that you type in the listing address and then dash and this one says labels so this is the container labels and then this one is the statement of mailing if you're not sure you can just open it up and this is the statement of mailing so just rename this 5739 136th Street dash statement of mailing so the container label is the actual label that will go on the box that Staple produces. So they're just going to put this on and then this package will go to Canada Post so they know what to do with it. And this is essentially confirmation of your postal walk order. So once you have those two documents saved, you're going to email them to C Virtual along with the approval for the just sold or just listed so we can complete your mail walk. And that's all you need to do in order to finish a mail walk. I hope that was helpful, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much.